Hello, my name is April and welcome to the Yoga Ranger Studio. Our practice today is focused on the hip flexors in total, but one in particular that a lot of us may have heard of called the psoas. So it's spelled P-S-O-A-S and it's actually paired with another muscle to help attach the top and bottom of your body together and also to help you flex the hip opening and closing. So I find that a lot of times in a lot of my practice in yoga as well as just everyday life, I have a lot of tightness and constriction here in this little space right in between the hip bone and the top of the leg. Some pinching sensation, maybe when I'm in a certain pose, a lot of pressure. If I have a close-knit pose, it feels a lot of kind of like a, a, a almost like a clothespin closing in on it. And that's from sitting a lot. To be honest, it takes a lot of opening there. Your psoas muscle runs actually from T11 or T12, so about lower back, your thoracic, a little bit here, and runs down through into the pelvis and into the top of your leg bone. So attaching you top and bottom together. The muscle that it's paired with is the iliacus. So you'll see that the iliopsoas are the two things melded together to help you lift the leg in and out, open out to the side just a little bit. It kind of helps you be mobile, essentially. If you didn't have it working, you wouldn't be able to walk. And you also would be sort of like Raggedy Ann or Andy, kind of flopping over. So we're gonna focus on that entirely. You're gonna need a few props, and this may seem like a lot of props. Some of these you can do without, some of them you might need. A block, an extra blanket, a blanket underneath, but that's only if you feel like you need it for a little bit of, because some of these poses are held, the pressure can be quite a lot on some of your bones and joints. And a bolster. If you don't have a bolster, a couple of pillows or a couple of blocks with a blanket on top or a couple of blankets stacked together will work just as well. So we're gonna start with a supported bridge pose. So we're gonna take our bolster. We're gonna sit down on it, come all the way off and settle it till it's right below the hip line. So where, where your, basically your belt would go running around, very at the top there, nice and comfortable. And we're gonna start by kind of walking that left leg out. We're gonna bring that right knee into the chest. So you can take the hand around the knee or you can take it underneath that leg. If you have knee issues, it's better to take it underneath. So just let the softness of that leg kind of reach down with gravity. Let your shoulder soften toward the floor. And just take some nice deep breaths here. So in this pose, we're really opening the front of the hip flexors on the left side and compressing on the right side. It's good to do both because you really want to exercise them, right? Some opening. So I know there's a lot of stuff out there. You'll see a lot of articles about the psoas, and I'm sure you, like me, thought, what is it? You've heard the term thrown around a lot. Hopefully this practice will give you a better idea of what it does, what it is, and how you can care for it. So the psoas, because it's attached to the back, will affect your lower back to some extent as well, because it attaches to each one of those little, your spine as it goes down. So if you have a lot of lower back pain, it is good to pay some attention to caring for your psoas. There is a concept called constructive rest, and I will put the link down below, that you can do to help release the psoas. Very healthy to do that once or twice a week. And maybe include a practice like this every week or a few of these poses every week in your regular practice. Settling into your breath. Now in yin, we hold these poses longer to really get into the connective tissue. Connective tissue surrounds, interweaves, becomes part of every part of our body. It's involved in the muscles, bones, organs. It is everywhere. We call it ubiquitous. Maybe inhaling through your nose a few times, exhaling through your mouth, letting some of that tension go. Because your psoas can hold tension. 
and the tissue around it can hold tension. So we want to release that, bring some fluidity and mobility to those areas. Soften your knee. Remember, this is not a muscular engagement practice. I'm going to go ahead and release that right leg. Slowly pull that heel in for the left. Take your right heel out, switching sides. Once again, hand behind the knee. If this is your bad knee, go ahead and take the hand behind the knee. If it's not, you're okay with that. You can put the hands in front of the knee, the shin area. Let your shoulders soften to the floor. And this will, to some extent, stretch a lot of the tissue in the front of the thigh as well. So. It's just where things connect. See if you can breathe into your lower back. Sometimes I uh, feel myself sort of arcing away from the floor because I'm trying to compensate because I know how tight this front section of my hip flexor is. And I feel like maybe I should try to protect it with muscles. It's okay. This is a supported pose. It is still safe. So connective tissue is something that tends to sort of build in the position you're in. So it tends to want to accommodate the positions you're in most of the day. So if you're someone who sits in a chair or at a desk, and you feel that this is a lot of a squared off 90 degree angle in your hip space and your hip flexor, you know that the connective tissue is attempting to accommodate your position and help stabilize you and form that position. So it is locking in place. So when you open this, you're really opening it up from that 90 degree angle and you will feel oftentimes a lot of kind of pulling sensation down the front side of the body around the hip area and maybe up into almost the belly space right above the hip bone. A few more breaths here. Go ahead and release that left leg. Take it alongside the right so you're in a full bridge position here, supported. You can even start to take your hands. I like to take my thumb and my middle finger and sort of spread this space just a little bit more. And once again, you'll feel yourself arching. Soften the back, soften the shoulders, and fill this space. You can even take the heels out a little bit further. Make a little room here. This is that space that is always compressed in a 90 degree angle in a lot of our lives. Go ahead and bend those knees, bring those feet flat. We're going to take our bolster out from underneath us, lift the hips, and go ahead and roll over to your right side and press yourself up. So here's where we're going to make use of block and blanket. Take your blanket, and this might be a little complicated, so we're going to take sort of a half hero on one side. So go ahead and take this right knee back behind you. The toes can be out to the side or they can be folded back behind you. We're going to take that left leg out to the other side. So sort of a half dragonfly, half hero, half saddle pose. It's hard to remember yin from yang sometimes. The blanket can be underneath you to give you a little bit of prop support so you don't feel like you're all the way compressing down into the floor. If you don't need it, you don't have to. You're going to go ahead and lean over. You can take that block, or if you are to the floor or to your knee or leg, you can take the elbow down. We're just going to let this soften here. So let that left knee soften a little bit. 
So we're opening a little bit of this inner hip flexor space, stretching the top of the thigh, and also getting into the psoas where it attaches in the back side of the body, the lower back. So you can pull that block a little bit further away. You can even take your hand and kind of feel that space. And if you're feeling sort of a soft pulling sensation, a little bit of tension in that lower back space, that is your psoas. Keep that right hand alongside the hip or next to the foot. Breathe into the space. The further you lean over, the more you're probably going to feel that. You're also going to begin to feel the compression maybe in this left hip flexor. Roll that right shoulder back. want more side body stretch you can always take that right arm up and over if that feels good for you but really this does get what we're looking for is that t11 t12 so as space Just about one more minute here and paying attention to your breath. Notice if you've begun to maybe breathe a little faster. This is a challenging position, particularly if you have a lot of hip flexor tension. Have patience with yourself. Extend your exhale. Allow things to feel a little bit softer. Two more breaths. Sometimes in a pose like this, it can seem like that's forever. Take your left hand, press your temple back up to center. Go ahead and bend that left knee to start with. Take your right leg out in front and just windshield wiper side to side. Sometimes a yin pose, when you come out, it feels so much better. That would be an example of one of those poses. <laughs> I'm gonna take the other side. So set your blanket up, tuck that left leg back behind. I like to take my thumb and kind of roll the calf muscle out of the way. Turn that foot out at a 90 degree angle or keep it flat underneath you. Turn it out to the side a little bit. Take that right leg out. Remember, two sides are never the same. For me, that is definitely true. Block on highest tide. I like to pull it in a little bit closer to begin with and then start to lean over just a little bit. Keep your hip points on the floor as much as you can. So your sitting bones centered. I like to take my left hand and kind of press that down and keep it in place. Maybe you find you can take that block out a little bit further. Maybe you don't need the block at all. Let your knee be soft so you don't have to press it down to the floor. You want to leave it soft so that your kneecap is loose. And that left hand to the bottom of the left foot or ankle. Roll that left shoulder back just a little bit. And you'll find me here rolling forward, you won't feel the same pulling. If you roll it back, you'll feel that stretch really engaging in that space where the psoas connects.
checking in with your breath. Maybe this side is a little bit easier because you've already done the other side, or maybe this is the side that's harder for you. So a little patience. Just about one more minute here. Deepening your exhale. Really exploring the sensations you have in any pose, but in this pose today. Notice what emotions some of these poses bring up, not just physical sensations, but sometimes there's some emotional sensations that come up. Anger, sadness, grief, frustration. your right hand, press that temple back up to center. Take that block off to the side. You're gonna lift that right knee first. Lean over, take that left leg out. That leg was harder. <laughs> Rock the knee side to side. Then we're gonna take child's pose. Everybody's favorite. You can take your blanket off to the side, knees wide. And just relax your forehead down to the floor or to a block. Think about lengthening the spine, keeping those hips settling toward the heels. Gently lift your hand. You're gonna walk your hands way over to the right. Taking that left hand out just a little bit further. Letting that right elbow drop to the floor. Imagine sort of curving that left side body down toward the hip, a little bit out toward the left like a rainbow shape.
Just about one more minute here. Start to lift back up, walk back to center. Come up on the fingertips, lengthen a little bit here, and then walk your hands way over to the left this time. Taking that right hand out a little bit further, left forearm to the floor, folding over. Just one more minute here, feeling that right side body sort of stretch out toward the right. Start to lift back up, walk those hands back to center on the fingertips. Stretch out a little bit. And then walk those hands back in. So here's where you might need a few more of these props. We're going to take half saddles, so we're gonna use the bolster to begin with. If you know you have knees that do not like this pose, you can take the block to the head of the bolster and set it up a little higher so you don't have to bend as deeply. and or you can take a blanket at the head. Take some of the build out. We're gonna turn ourselves around. And this is where the second blanket really kind of comes in handy. You're gonna sit yourself down right up against that. We're gonna take, well, let's start with the left first, right leg out first. So left leg folded back, you can turn the foot out and you'll know if this is really better for you immediately. <laughs> it's pretty fast. Now, some people like to have that right up against the hips. I like to have it a little bit further away so I can come down. If your knee lifts off, that's okay. Over time, it will come down. Don't worry about it. Take your hands, tilt your hips, and shift them down towards your feet. Now here, if you want to, you can take the arms up overhead and hold opposite elbows. This will really stretch that entire front side of the body deeply. If this is still too much, you can always bend that right knee and that's gonna take some of the pressure off as well. So choose what works best for you. You can even take a little block underneath your hips to give you support so it's not as far. or you could come all the way down to the floor if that's better for you. Close your eyes, breathe into the space.
about one more minute to go here. Start to release your elbows if you have your arms up overhead and just take those arms out to the side. Take some nice deep breaths, fill the belly, chest, collarbones, open up. And then beginning to take your elbows underneath, tuck your chin to your chest, start to make your way back up. Instead of unfolding, we're gonna go ahead and take that right foot in and we're gonna to twist to the right. These last two breaths, turn your head and look over your left shoulder. And unwinding, take that right leg out. Lean over to the right, take that left leg out. Give it a little massage, wiggle the toes, wave everything around, maybe rock knees side to side. pose has a lot of strength in it just in the activity going through so go ahead and switch sides so lean over to the left take that right leg back behind you once again turning that foot out to a 90 degree angle if that is better for you pull the bolster up to start with kind of find your starting place here push it out if you find you're happier with that start to come down and you can stay upright too you can always bring your elbows down and just stay here this is a good place or you can come all the way down, take your hands, lift your hips, and shift everything down just a little bit toward the feet. Here, taking that left foot flat, if that is easier for you and on your knee. Finding your position here. Once again, you can take your arms up over your head. This time you would take the opposite of what you took last time. So if you had the right arm in front, you would take the left arm in front this time. And just feel that deep lengthening from the kneecap all the way up into the chest. Focus your breath on the hip flexor area right in that space between your pelvic bone and your upper thigh. Checking in with your breath, noticing sensations, physical and emotional. A lot can come up when we work with the hip flexors and the hip area. 
Just breathe into those feelings. These last few breaths go and release your arms if you have them up overhead and just take those hands alongside the hips start to tuck those elbows underneath bring your chin to your chest and use your hands and elbows to kind of press yourself up go ahead and reach inside that left leg bring that left foot into the right thigh. I'm going to twist over to the left this time. It's a gentle twist. Last two breaths. Turn and look over that right shoulder. A little neck stretch here. Releasing back to center, unwind that left foot. Lean over to the left and bring that right foot back out in front of you. Give yourself a little massage, wiggle the toes, maybe rock the knees side to side. Stretch out. Never been so glad to stretch your legs out straight, right? Okay, on to our dragon poses. So we'll take our bolster off to the side over there lock off to the side. Might need that, might not. Take our blanket across the center. Bring both knees onto that blanket, right foot out in front of you. So I like to start with my fingertips down on the floor to find that length. So sort of lift that knee up, pull it to you. We're going to take a little bit different version of it. So you're going to walk your heel back a little bit so that your knee goes over your toes. And I know every time you've done this, you've been told never to do that. We're going to go there. <laughs> In a yang class, if you're bearing all your weight, you don't wanna take the knee over the ankle. But in this case, we're pretty safe here. If this is too much for you, take the block and take your hands down to the block or walk your foot a little bit further forward. But otherwise, take your hands on top of your thigh. You're gonna feel a lot of that stretch again here in the front side of your hip. And we're gonna let you sink back a little bit. And we're gonna kinda of compress the lower back very gently and softly. This is a high dragon. As you go, maybe you find you can sink a little bit deeper into this pose, or maybe you need to back out just a little bit.
Just a few more breaths. I always tell people, imagine what this will feel like when you're done. Last deep inhale and exhale. Start to shift back a little bit. You're gonna come into downward facing dog. So palms flat, hips high. You can walk your dog out. Notice how that left front hip flexor feels versus the right. Don't worry about how your dog looks or feels. Just sort of walk things out, shake it out, shake your head out, yes and no. And then we're gonna take our second side. Come down on your knees, take that left leg out in front of you. Fingertips down so you can lift that back knee, stretch it out, roll to the top side of that kneecap. You're gonna walk your left foot back a little bit, your left heel back so that your knee comes slightly over the ankle. Hands down into a block, or you can take your hands up onto the thigh. Here again, soften the shoulders, lift the chest and belly, and that's gonna really stretch and lengthen that right side. Notice your breath. I find myself in this pose sometimes holding my breath. I have to remind myself to take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Exhale through the mouth. Let the shoulders soften down toward the heels. Last few deep breaths. Inhale deeply. Exhale through the mouth. Gently start to shift back. Make your way back into downward facing dog. Shake your head out yes and no. Walk your feet out. into child's pose just for a couple of breaths and keep your knees a little bit closer together here. Coming back to center. I'm gonna take our blanket off to the side and come onto our backs. So we're gonna take a windshield wiper twist, arms out to the side, we're gonna walk our feet super wide on the mat so that your knees are never going to like run into each other like a windshield wiper and just very gently start to move them side to side. Not all the way down quite yet. This is a really gentle, soothing way to move into the psoas and as well as the lower back, really helping the lumbar spine when you next get over to the left, let those knees just drop. So imagine sort of a windshield wiper flop. Let them get super heavy. You can turn and look over your right shoulder or you can look straight up at the ceiling.
together here again, you feel some stretch into the upper thigh leg, maybe a little bit in the lower back for the twist and up a little bit of the side body, giving you more space, a soft, gentle psoas stretch. Help and keep the connective tissue in and around it more fluid. Just around a minute left here. Here again, noticing if your back tends to arch in response to the tightness in the hip flexors. Soften your back. Your next inhale, turn your head back to center. Engage your core very lightly and pull those knees back through center. Here again, very soft half windshield wiper movements. Notice how the left and right feel different here. Pay attention to the lower back. I know it feel very different in the windshield wiper twist. When you next get over to the right side, just go ahead and let those knees drop over to the right, wherever they may fall. You can turn and look over your left shoulder or just look straight up. Let gravity pull those knees down. You don't need to force them down just let gravity take them there. Remember, it may not look like the same posture as you have in a yang practice. But here, we're working with completely different tissue. No muscle engagement here. Keeping in mind to soften the lower back, release that arching muscle engagement, paying attention to your breath, allowing it to sort of soothe and smooth things out. Last minute here.
Gently turn your head back to center. Softly engage your core, bring those knees back through the middle. And once again, real half windshield wiper movement. Almost like there's a real soft breeze just blowing your knees side to side. And then walking your feet a little bit closer together, you're gonna let the knees just drop gently to the center and walk your feet a little bit further away from your hips. Here's your Shavasana position. Go ahead and settle in, tuck the shoulder blades underneath. Maybe lift your head, look at your knees and drop the head back down to lengthen the cervical spine. Take some nice, big, deep, long breaths. Breathing into the hips and the lower back. Feeling them soften and release. If you have more time to spend in Shavasana, I truly suggest you spend as long as you can. If this is all the time you have, gently begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Bring more awareness to your breath and give it a little energy, a little depth. Go ahead and take your legs out straight. Take your arms up overhead like a pencil and stretch out through the toes, stretch out through the fingertips, as long and tall as you can get. And then exhale, roll over to your right side. Take a couple of breaths on your right side. When you're ready, press yourself up into whatever seated position you like best, using whatever props you have around you to find comfort in your seat. Taking your palms down onto your knees, lifting up and lengthening through your spine. On an exhale, drop your fingertips down to the floor. Inhale, sweep the hands all the way up and overhead. Open your eyes, look up at your palms. Exhale, hands to heart. Peace and namaste. I hope this helps really open and bring mobility and fluidity to your psoas muscles and the entire hip flexor complex. If you have any questions or comments, please click like and comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. If you are enjoying these practices, please remember to subscribe over here on your right hand side in the subscribe button. If you are looking for more practices with me or interested in deepening your experience of yoga overall, I now have the yogaranger.vhx.tv member community. It has a community forum, live calls each month. A lot of the YouTube videos, about 115 of them have been remastered and placed on there. And they also get exclusive weekly videos. Some of the longer, more intensive practices are located on that member community and we'd love to have you join us. So take a look at that. And I hope to see you again, either here on your mat on YouTube or on the member community. Have a great week.